Hello everyone, welcome to the Electromechanical Devices course. In today's uh, lecture, we're gonna uh, discuss the chapter three, uh, chapter four, which is the transients. This is the title of the chapter. The transients, the word itself, it would be not clear to many of you, but very quick, the transient, this is the case that you do have a current or a voltage through the electrical circuit. And for some reason that this current and volt or either one of them is time dependent. It means that it is EC current or EC voltage that it change over time. And at the initiation of the variation function of this voltage or the current, it would be have like some phase or some period of time that it's gonna behave like a transient. And the transient, it means that it's gonna be severely dependent on the time till it would reach another phase of the uh, time variation of the voltage or the current known as the steady state phase or the steady state case of the voltage or the current. So you could say that if we decided to plot the variation of the voltage and the current over time, we're going to find a phase or a period of time that is known as the transient and then we're going to move to the steady state. Through chapter four, we are interested in investigating or doing analysis to the electrical circuit within the transient state or the transient phase of the uh, the current and the voltage within the electrical circuit. And even more than that, the interesting is just to know how we can do analysis to the electrical circuits that would include resistors, capac capacitors, and inductors in the meanwhile. we Through chapter two, we discuss the electrical circuit that ju just include resistors. And we have discussed four methods to do analysis for these electrical circuits. This method, so the first one was the Kirchhoff voltage law, current law, and Ohm's law. Like we apply these three laws, these fundamental laws to do analysis for the electrical circuit. Then we consider the equivalent resistance method that we come up with an equivalent resistance for all the resistors in the electrical circuit. Then we can uh, use this method for doing analysis for different resistive circuits. Then we discuss the mesh current method and the voltage analysis method. So these are the four methods. We're gonna use them. These four methods are general methods that can be used for doing analysis for any electrical circuit, whatever it is. Whatever it just include resistors, or include resistors and capacitors and inductors, as I'm gonna show you, right? So mainly through this chapter, the objective again is just to give you an idea how we can do analysis for a general electrical circuit that it would include all the resistors and capacitors in the meanwhile. And let us consider this example of a very general electrical circuit. Like, let us assume that we do have an electrical circuit with some capacitors arranged in this way, and you would have here another capacitor, and then you would have like a resistor, and there should be like another resistor. You would have a coil, which is inductors with L, like this is L1, this is like R1, and we're gonna have here like R2, this is C1, C2, and C3. In addition, you may have another coil is located somewhere, uh, uh, another inductor. Then you're going to have the, the source, the battery Vs, for example, in this way. So this is a typical example of many of the electrical circuits that we use. We Basically, we could use multiple capacitors, multiple resistors, in addition to multiple inductors in the same electrical circuit. And there should be some currents already moving as I of t and this voltage vs it should be a function of t as well in case that you have ac voltage and the current is going to be ac current it means that it is or, uh, or uh, alternating current it means that it already changing it changes over time so for this general electrical circuit we have so many capacitors we do have so many resistors and so many inductors so we can somehow do simplification based on the concept of the equivalent resistance equivalent uh, capacitors and equivalent inductors as we discussed in the previous chapters that we can somehow convert this electrical circuit <coughs> into a simplified version into just one capacitor one resistor and one capacitor and then we're gonna have here like one coil and we're gonna have the electrical source, which is Vs. Make sense? And definitely we're gonna have a current that should be roaming through this loop as I of t, and this should be the Vs as a function of time. And here we're gonna have 
one R and one C and one L. But you should understand that this one R, it should be the equivalent of R1 and R2. And this C, it should be the equivalent of all of these Cs, all of these capacitances in this electrical circuit. And L1 and L2, you're gonna kind of combining them into just one L. So this is gonna give us a type of circuit that it is commonly known as RLC circuit. So remember that in chapter two, we discuss only resistive circuit that just were including just resistances or resistors. But here we're gonna consider the general case that we're gonna consider the three electrical elements that we discussed through chapter two and chapter three that we do have an electrical circuit that include resistor, capacitor, and inductor in the meanwhile. So this is commonly known as R, L, C, where R stands for the resistance, L stands for the inductance, and C stands for the capacitance of the capacitor. Make sense? This is the most general one, but definitely there are more advanced electrical circuit than this ones. But this, this is, if we're gonna talk, this is the general uh, basic form of an electrical circuit, whatever it is for a given electrical source and you're gonna have a current. Make sense? So now we are interested in finding an equation of this electrical circuit, of this general one. So the key idea here that whatever the electrical circuit that is gonna be given to you, we can somehow do, find the equivalent of all of the capacitances, find the equivalent of all of the resistors and the inductances into one just one L, one just, just one C, just one R. So we're gonna end up with a simplified form of the electrical circuit after we doing simplification through the equivalent capacitance, inductance and, and resistance. Make sense? So if we did so, we can simply do analysis for this electrical circuit and the analysis of this electrical circuit is just for this one. We can simply apply the Kirchhoff voltage law to find an equation for this electrical circuit. As analysis, as we mentioned before, is just to find the unknowns. So if we consider the symbol RLC circuit, and we are interested in finding any of the unknowns within this electrical circuit, we have to convert this one into an equation or a set of equations, two or three equations. This one, it has only one loop. So according to Kirchhoff voltage law, we're gonna end up this circuit, it will be represented into just one equation. But this one, it would be represented onto two equations, for example. But again, we simplify this one into just one equation or one loop, so we can simply represent this equivalent form of the electrical circuit using these equivalent resistances and capacitance and inductors into one equation, one equation only. And this is the equation that we are going to drive now, okay? So if we decided to apply the Kirchhoff voltage law, and this is gonna be if you are required to do analysis for this electrical circuit, so the first step basically is just to find the circuit, <clears throat> the circuit equation, right? And to do so, the simplest method for the simple electrical circuit that we have here is just to apply the Kirchhoff voltage law. So let me draw the circuit one more time that we do have here capacitance, let me have a space, this is the resistance, and we do have capacitance, we do have inductance. It doesn't matter if we put here the capacitance, here or the capacitor, here the resistor, or the inductor, the order, it doesn't matter at all. We still have the RLC circuit, right? And this is gonna be the voltage source, which is plus or minus, and we do have, which is Vs as a function of T in the general case. And we should have here a current as I of T rotating or, or going over these three electrical elements, right? So if we decided to apply the Kirchhoff voltage law, just apply, apply the Kirchhoff voltage law, that is said that the sum of voltage over this loop, through this loop, it should be zero, or you could, we can write this, uh, for this loop, the equation as the negative of Vs, negative because this is the input source, plus the Vr, plus the Vc, plus the Vl, it should equal to zero. This is the equation voltage equation, <coughs> right? Where, what is Vs? This is the source voltage. Vr, this is the voltage, this is the voltage over on resistor, But this is the voltage over the capacitor. 
and this is the voltage over the inductor. Make sense? Like this is the inductance voltage, this is the capacitance voltage, this is the resistance voltage in addition to the input voltage, which is Vs. Make sense? If you remember that the volt, we should have some expression, some equations for all of these voltages, like Vr from the Ohm's law, it should be the current, which is I of T times R, times the resistance, right? And how about the voltage over the capacitor? The voltage over the capacitor from chapter three, it should be the one over C in terms of the current, the integration of the current DT plus V0, where V0 simply it is an initial charge or initial voltage that would be stored in case that there is an initial charge in this capacitor. In many of the cases, this VZ is going to be zero since he did it in case that he didn't mention anything uh, regarding the initial voltage stored or the charge stored in the in the capacitor. We said that the capacitor is stored energy and then we can use this energy. So we do have charging and we do have discharging, right, of the energy. So in case that we have initially charge, this is going to be V0. In case there is no initial charge, V0 will be zero. So anyway, V0 will be given whatever with a zero value or it will be uh, any other value, right? So this is the voltage over the capacitor. And we knew from chapter three that the voltage over the inductor, it should be the L, which is the inductance in Henry's of the inductor times the derivative of the current with respect to the T. So simply, if you plug these voltage relations into this question voltage law, we're going to end up with an equation, which should be the equation that represents this electrical circuit. So if we substitute it here, we're going to end up with, we can simply move the Vs to the right-hand side. So we're going to end up with the Vs or just move these others to the right-hand side and get rid of the uh, negatives. So we're going to end up with R times I of T. This is the Vr plus the Vc, which is one over C, the integration of the current with respect to the time plus V0, right? Plus the Vl, which it should be the plus the L times the Di of T by dt. Make sense? So this is going to give us the equation. This equation is the one that should represent this electrical circuit. This is the equation that represents this RLC electrical circuit. As you can see, this equation includes lots of things. One of the things, let us consider the general case that you do have Vs as a function of time, all right? So I've just wrote the equation one more time and arranged the terms. So as you can see, in this equation, we do have the current as a function of time, just the current. Then we do have the integral of the current over the time. In addition, we do have the derivative of the current over the time plus V0. So this equation, it has so many parameters. Definitely, in many of the cases, since we are interested in the analysis of electrical circuit, it means that R, L, and C will be given, will be known. But the thing that would be unknown, it would be either the voltage or the current through this electrical circuit. Like, for example, if the current was given, we can simply solve the equation for the voltage. Or if the voltage was not uh, was, was given, we can, in this case, the unknown is going to be the current. It means that this is just one equation that should be solved in just one unknown. Definitely, since we are doing analysis, this unknown, it would be either the voltage or the current. If the, if the current is given, we can simply, the current it would be given as a constant value, or it would be given as a function of t, so simply you're going to plug the current here into this equation and do the integration, do the derivative with respect to the current, and plug with all the given data, you're going to end up with the voltage as a function of time, or it would be constant, it depends. So simply we can solve this equation is a straightforward Simple algebraic equation for so for uh, if if we are interested in solving this equation for the voltage, so solving the equation for the voltage for the source volt, which is this one. This is the source for volt, right? Solving this equation in the source voltage, it is a straightforward method. There is no need. It is just simple algebraic equation. Plug with the uh, bl substitute with the current into this equation. Do the integration, the derivative. You're gonna end up with one equation, simple linear algebraic equation that can be simply solved for the voltage, no problem. But the problem start is with in case that we are interested in finding the current for a given voltage. R is given. Yes, the volt will be given as a function of time, or it would be given as a constant. 
The C will be given, L will be given, V0 will be given, everything except the current. So to solve this equation for the current, it is not a straightforward method. It is not simple in terms of mathematics. Why? Because we do have R, we do have integration, we do have the derivative in one equation. So we do have all the different forms of the current in terms of derivative of the current, the integral and the current itself into one equation. So definitely we're going to end up with ordinary differential equation that should be used based on the concept of the differential uh, mathematics or the differential, uh, the, uh, uh, the ordinary differential equation that you covered in the differential course or the calculus or the mathematics class. Okay, so that's why in this part here, to solve this equation, and this is the next step. So here we just drive the equation. That's it for the first step, just to drive this equation. Now the challenge is how we can solve this equation, right? So I'm going to give you different cases, different, we, I'm going to discuss with you right now different cases of this equation, and I'm going to show you how we can solve this equation, especially in case that we're going to end up with an or a, a first order ODE, because we would end up with a second order ODE, so we're going to cover these parts as well through this uh, part. Make sense? So as I mentioned, usually this equation, it will be solved for the current. And in this case, at the input surface, uh, uh, source or voltage will be, will be provided or given, right? So now we can move to the next step. The second step is simply solving the equation. So step two is just to see how we can solve the equation. To solve the circuit equation. But to solve the circuit equation for the current, I of t, we have to consider some cases here, different scenarios. So, so there is, there are different cases that should be considered be considered to solve the circuit the circuit equation okay so the first scenario the first option or the first thing that we would experience here let us consider the first case that we do have for the case of a DC voltage, voltage source. DC voltage source, it means that the voltage, it should be constant. The volt Vs, it's gonna be constant. What does it mean constant? It is not a function of the time. Not a function of the time, it means that the time derivative of the voltage source with respect to the time, it should be zero. This is the meaning that we do have a constant Vs. Just consider this first case. And let us copy the equation one more time, this equation. So this equation, it will be written. I'm just going to copy the equation one more time. So this is the equation. So this term, it will not be a function of time and it still is going to be constant. It means that this of t, it will be constant. So simply it's going to be just Vs. There is no time derivative or there is no time dependence here, right? So to solve this equation is still challenges. We cannot handle the having integral form of the unknown and the derivative form of the unknown in one equation. So we can easily solve integral equation, just integral. For example, if there is no derivative, we can solve the equation directly. If there is no integral, we can solve the derivative equation directly, right? So it is easy for us to solve differential equations and they should have either differential or just integral into one equation, but here we do have both. So it means that we have to get rid of the integral and keep the differential equation because we, it is easy for us to solve uh, differential equation more than the integral equation in, in terms of mathematically speaking. So the objective right now is just to get rid of this integral. To get rid of the integral, what we're gonna do, just differentiate or apply, do derivative to both sides with respect to the time. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna have the time derivative, the time derivative of Vs 
or the derivative of Vs with respect to the time. But remember that Vs it is itself, it should be, its time derivative should be zero. Why? Because Vs is already zero. This is gonna give us the derivative of this term, the R is constant. The derivative of I is gonna be given is gonna give us di of t by dt plus one over c. The, the derivative is gonna get rid of the integration. When we do derivative to the integral, we already canceling the integration. So this is gonna give us just i of t, make sense? Plus the L, which is constant. The derivative, the first derivative is, is gonna be second derivative of the current with respect to the time, plus dv0 by dt. And remember that this is just a constant value, right? Anyway, this is initially charge of the capacitance and it's gonna be all the time constant value, either zero or a value, make sense? So since this term is a constant, definitely it's gonna be zero. So it will be canceled. So we're gonna end up with this equation, this term, this term, this term, and the zero on the, on the left side. So we're gonna end up with a very simple order, second order ODE, like the right hand side here, we can write this equation into this form. We can start with the second order derivative, which is L, d square i of t by dt square plus one over c or let us start with the r r di of t by dt plus the one over c i of t equals zero this is gonna give us the equation in case that we do have this is the equation that should be solved we cannot solve the integral with the derivative in one equation we have to use we have to convert we have to get rid of the integral. We have to, uh, to, to have one form. All of these terms should be derivatives only. Make sense? So simply, this equation is an ordinary differential equation. And if you remember from the mathematics class, send the right-hand side. So this, is, this term includes i. This term includes i. This term includes i. But if there is a constant or any other term that does not include i, it should be moved to the right-hand side. Here we don't have any term that include, that, that, that does not include i, so it means that the right hand side is gonna be zero. Since the right hand side is zero, it means that we're gonna end up with a homogeneous ordinary differential equation. This means, this right hand side, it means there is no forcing term from the mathematics. It means that this zero indicates, this indicates, indicates that we do have homogeneous, ODE, ODE, which stands for ordinary differential equation. This equation here, this equation is a second order, second order, homogeneous. ODE, ordinary, ordinary differential equation which is commonly known as the ODE, as you studied this one in the differential class or the mathematics class. Make sense? Why it is second order? Because we have second order derivative of the current plus a first order derivative of the current plus just the current, zero order derivative of the current. So this term, it is a zero order derivative. Here, we do have zero order derivative term. But this term is a first order derivative term. This term is a second order derivative term. So since we do have, so the order of the overall equation, the order of the equation, the ordinary differential equation, it takes the highest order of the differential term. Like the highest differential that we have here is the second order differential, which is this term. This means that the overall ODE is classified as second order ODE. And in the meanwhile, it is homogeneous because the right side is zero. Make sense? This is what you studied in the mathematics. So we're gonna go over these things one more time. We're just gonna remind you with these things and we're gonna use them here for, the, uh, for this part, for solving this equation for the electrical circuit. Make sense? So this is one case, in case, so the first option is, in case that DC is constant, so the right-hand side or this term will be zero, it means that there is no force for this ODE, and if we try to solve this ordinary differential equation, it should be solved for the current. 
We have to use the mathematical things that you studied in solving second order ODE in the mathematics class. And this is what we're going to discuss but in the next video. I'm going to show you with detail how we can solve second order ODE. This is, but this is one of the options. The other options here that to consider the general case, how about if we do have this voltage is time dependent? It means that this derivative is not zero. It means that Vs, it should be a function of time. This is a more general case. So now let us move to the second option or the second scenario that we may have the for a given time dependent voltage source. So what does it mean this? This means that Vs, it will be given as a function of time. It means that dVs by dt will have value. It will not be equal to zero. Make sense? So simply, if we gonna write the equation one more time, just let me copy the equation. This is the equation that we got up there for the electrical circuit. So again, to get rid of the integral, we have to apply derivative to both sides. So the derivative of this side is gonna give us dVs by dt. This term, it will not be zero. Why Vs it is a function of time? So it has a value equals, this is gonna be equals the R times di by dt plus one over C, the integral will be eliminated because of the derivative. So this is gonna give us the I of T plus the L. This is gonna give us the second derivative of I by the T square plus the DV zero by the T, which definitely is gonna be zero since V zero is already zero. So we're gonna end up with the second order ODE as well, which is the L times D square I of T divided by DT square plus R times DI of T by dt plus the one over c i of t equals the dvs of t by dt. Make sense? So this is gonna give us this ODE. The still the ODE order it is second order ODE. Why? Because we do have second order derivative of the current. And the right hand side here, it is not zero. It means that this is non-homogeneous ODE. Non-homogeneous, it means there is a forcing term. So forcing term, solving homogeneous ODEs is different than solving the non-homogeneous ODEs. The non-homogeneous, there is an, an extra term known as the steady state solution in addition to this transient solution. And here we're gonna start talking about transient and steady state, right? But forget about these points for now and let us just understand this equation, this different scenario that we have here. For the case that Vs is a function of time, so we're gonna end up with a general ODE, second order ODE. So this type of ODE, it is a second order. Non-homogeneous, non-homogeneous. Why non-homogeneous? Because the right-hand side of this equation, it has a value, right? Non-homogeneous ordinary differential equation. So to solve this equation, you have to use the mathematical concept of solving second order ODEs, non-homogeneous ODEs. Make sense? So these are the two main scenarios that we would have that you may have the current or the voltage is constant. The other scenario is the voltage is uh, time dependent and this is the general case. So simply even into this equation, if the Vs is constant, this term by definition is gonna be zero. So you're gonna sit back again to this previous equation of the previous scenario or option, right? Or example. Now, within this electrical circuit, so these are the equations that should be solved. And as you can see, in case that we do have an electrical circuit that include the three elements, all of them together, R, L, and C, in one electrical circuit, in any way, we're gonna end up with a second order ODE. This second order ODE, it would be homogeneous in case that Vs is zero, or it would be non-homogeneous in case that the Vs is a function of time or time dependent. Make sense? But anyway, for any RLC circuit, what is the RLC circuit? You should understand the name. R stands for resistance, L inductance, C capacitance. This is the general circuit that include all the three elements, all of them together. Anyway, we're gonna end up with a second order ODE. Make sense? But how about if we do have an electrical circuit and there is no capacitance? 
or there is no inductance. But anyway, for any electrical circuit, there should be resistance. The resistance is by default. It's the default electrical element that should be exist in any electrical circuit. But probably, so probably we may have electrical circuit without capacitance or without inductance, right? In case that you have an electrical circuit with just capacitance, this is like you already charging the capacitance. Or just inductor, it means that you're already just generating a magnetic field. But this is not a practical use of an electrical circuit. The practical use of electrical circuit, anyway, it should include R, resistance. So the R, it will be there in any way, but we may have R with C or R with L only, or we may have the three together. This is the three case, the R, L, C circuit. Now let us investigate how, what's gonna happen to these equations. What are the changes to these equations in case that one of the C's or the R's will be eliminated? There is no resistance, there is no capacitance, for example, or there is no inductance within the electrical circuit. So what will be the shape of this or general differential equation or the circuit equation? This is known as the circuit equation. So now let us consider this scenario or this case, the case number three. How about for the case, this is for the case that, for the case, there is no capacitance. No capacitance, it means that C is going to be tends to infinity. I'm going to let you know why. The capacitance of the capacitance, uh, the capacitor, if it is tends to infinity, it means that we are not giving time. There is no enough time to charge because the capacitor, the capacitor to work, it should be charged first, then it should be discharged. It means that this energy should be discharged. So it should take energy. So it's gonna spend time receiving energy from the battery. Then it, it's gonna, the capacitor will use this energy to feed the other element within the electrical circuit. Make sense? So in case that the capacitance of the capacitor tends to infinity, so it means that the capacitor is gonna work all the time like receiver, it won't gonna give. It means that the function of the capacitor, it will be eliminated. So it's gonna work like a, a conductor. What does it mean it's gonna work like a conductor? It means that it won't gonna be used. It won't gonna, it's gonna take energy and, and, and send the energy. It means that there is no enough time for the, for the capacitor to send energy, to give energy. It means that, the, assuming that there is no capacitor, the, the function of the capacitor in this case, it will be null. There is no function, there is no uh, objective of using the capacitor, uh, the capacitor with a capacitor that tends to infinity, okay? So anyway, if we simply plugged into these equations, let us work on this general case that you have Vs is a function of time. If we substitute for C tends to infinity here, this term will be zero, right? For C tends to infinity, one over infinity gives zero. So this term will be automatically eliminated, right? So this equation, we simply will be reduced to this form. Like L, the second derivative of the current of T with respect to the time square plus R times the DI of T with respect to the time plus the one over C term will be eliminated, will be zero for the case that C tends to infinity equals dVs of T by dt. So this is gonna give us another form of the equation, but this other form, as you can see, it is still a second order ODE. It is still a second order ODE. Why? Because of the second order derivative of the current. So as you can see, this equation, it looks like it is second order ODE. And if we decided to handle this or solve this equation into this form, we have to apply the methods of, this, of solving the second order ODE and it's gonna be non-homogeneous. But the, as you remember from the mathematics class, solving second order ODEs, it is more complicated than solving first order ODE. It means that as we increasing the order of the derivative, the lots, the, it takes lots of mathematics to be solved, right? So for this equation, basically, there is an option that we can reduce the order of this ordinary differential equation into a first order ODE. It is second order as already shown here, but we can get rid of the second order to be as a first order ODE. How we can do so? Simply if we did integration to both sides, if we integrated 
all of these different terms. We are reducing back to the first order ODE. Someone would ask us or tell, say that, okay, so why I didn't do integration here, but if we did integration to this previous equation, this also as a second order ODE, but we have to solve this one as a second order ODE. Why? Because if we try to apply integral to all of these different terms, we're going to end up with the integral term. And this is what we did. We get rid of the integral. We wanted to get rid of the integral. But here, if we did integration to both sides, to all of these terms, there is no integral terms will be show up. We're still going to work with a differential term. So what we're going to do here to reduce the order of the differential of this equation, apply the integral to the three terms. So we're going to end up with this equation. The integral of this term is going to give us just L di of t by dt. First order derivative plus R. The derivative will be eliminated with the integral to be, will be cancelled with the integral to be just I of t. Equal the derivative will be eliminated or cancelled by the integral. So this is going to give us Vs of t. So this is going to give us an equivalent identical form not identical, but it is an equivalent form of the second order ODE as a reduced version as first order ODE. So this is going to be a first order ODE, ordinary differential equation. And this ODE, it is non-homogeneous. It is non-homogeneous ODE. Why it is non-homogeneous ODE? Because the right-hand side will have a value. No matter what, the Vs it is constant or time derivative, anyway, Vs will have a value. It means that anyway, this right-hand side term will have a value. So all the time, this equation will be non-homogeneous. Make sense? And why it is first order ODE? Because we just end up with just one first order derivative of the current. So we're going to conclude that this type of electrical circuit this electrical circuit is commonly known as RLC. This is the general circuit that includes all the three elements together. This is the RLC circuit. But here we are excluding the, 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 the capacitance, so, or the capacitors, so we're gonna end up with just RL, just RL circuit. There is, this is the electrical circuit with no capacitance. This is the R, is commonly known as the RL circuit. So for RL circuit that just include resistor and inductors, we, the, the circuit equation will be a first order ODE and it will be all the time non-homogeneous. But for the general circuit that include the three elements, RLC circuit, it, we're going to end up with a second order ODE that it would be homogeneous or non-homogeneous. Homogeneous in case that the Vs is constant, non-homogeneous in case that Vs it is a function of time. But the RL circuit all the time is going to give us a first order ODE and all the time is going to be non-homogeneous. Make sense? Let us consider the fourth case. The case that how about if L is zero, there is no L. So for this one, for the case, for the case, there is no inductor. So what does it mean? It means that L equals zero. So we're gonna end up with RC circuit. We are excluding L from this one. We are excluding, so we're gonna end up with just RC circuit. So going back again to this equation, just using this equation, I'm just going to copy this equation here. So we're going to end up with this equation. This equation, this is the RL, this is the RLC circuit, right? This is the general equation. For this case, we are getting rid of L. There is no L. L is just zero. So this term will be eliminated. So we're going to end up with this equation, right? This is going to be the equation. So we're going to end up simply with this equation as R times di of t by dt plus by dt plus the one over c i of t equals dvs of t by dt. Make sense? This is going to give us the equation for the case that there is no L. There is no L, it means that we are talking about the RC circuit. We are talking about the, this is commonly known as the RC circuit. R C circuit. Make sense? So for RC circuit, there is no inductance. We're going to end up with the first order ODE. Someone could say that, how about if I try to integrate all the terms, both sides of this equ equation? If we try to apply integral here, we're going to end up with the current. If we apply the integral here, we're going to end up with the integral of the current. 
and solving for an ordinary or an equation for the integral, it is not simple in terms of mathematics. And anyway, the integral form of the current will be converted back again to the differential form. It means that if we try to apply the integral to reduce the order, because to reduce the order of the differential, we can end up to zero order ODE, which is the al linear algebraic equation, the conventional al uh, linear uh, algebraic equation that we did it for the in chapter two for the resistive circuits. Make sense? But simply we cannot do so because we're gonna end up with the integral. So anyway, we still gonna end up with the first order ODE. So there is no need to apply the integral as we did here for this case. So just for this case, we can apply the integral to eliminate the order from second order to first order ODE to end up with an order ODE. But this one, anyway, we gonna end up with a first order order ODE. Ordinary differential equation, and this ordinary differential equation, it would be homogeneous for the case that Vs is constant, or it would be non-homogeneous in case that Vs is already function of time. Make sense? Because as you can see, if Vs is constant, this term will be zero. So we're going to end up with a homogeneous ODE. But if, v, if uh, Vs of t is, is a function of time, so this term will have a value. So in this case, we're going to end up with the first order non-homogeneous ODE. Make sense? So this is for the RC circuit, and these are the all the cases. So generally, we do have three possibilities here, three options. We do have either RLC circuit, and this is the general circuit, and this circuit is going to give us all the time second order ODE that would be homogeneous or non-homogeneous depending on the Vs. But if we are excluding either C or L, we're going to end up with the first order ODE. Here we excluded C. There is no capacitor. So we end up with first order ODE. We, here we excluded the inductor. There is no inductance. So we also we end up with the first order ODE. Make sense? So these are the different scenarios. These are the different cases that we have to consider. So I can give you, give you a summary of the three different electrical circuit. For the first case that you'd have the RLC circuit that the circuit will include, the circuit will include the resistor, capacitor, and inductor, all of them in one electrical circuit with one source, Vs. In this way, right, plus and minus, and definitely there should be a current as I of T and there is RCL. This is the general circuit. This circuit is going to give us a second order ODE. The second order ODE, it would be homogeneous for the case that Vs is constant, or it would be non-homogeneous for the case that Vs it is a function of T. Make sense? The second scenario or the second type of electrical circuit that we do have just RL circuit. There is no capacitance. So it means that we do have this electrical circuit, just R and L, like this one. And we do have Vs, then we do have the current as I of T, and we do have here R and L. So for this one, we're going to end up with a first order ODE. This is going to give us first order. Ordinary differential equation, and this ordinary differential equation, all the time, always it's gonna be, it's gonna be non-homogeneous. All the time it's gonna be non-homogeneous. Why? Because the right hand side all the time will be with a value. But for the case that RC circuit, we're gonna have here an electrical circuit like this one, like we do have R, as you can see, R it should be there, right? All the time for all of these different types of electrical circuit. For the RC circuit, which is Vs, we do have here a current as I of T, and this is C. We're gonna end up with a first order ODE as well. First order, ordinary differential equation, but this first order ODE, it would be homogeneous. For the case that Vs is constant, or it would be non-homogeneous, for the case that Vs it is a function of T. 
Make sense? So these are all the different scenarios that we already discussed so far for these different electrical circuit. And this is the interest of this chapter. It's just to show you how we can drive the circuit equation for these different scenarios. What is the shape of the circuit equation for these different scenarios and how we can solve them. Solving these ODEs is just mathematics. This is pure mathematics. You can use the mathematical things that we already studied in the algebraic class or the uh, differential class, the mathematical class, or even you can use MATLAB, for example, which is, you, 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 you know MATLAB. You can use MATLAB for solving your differential equation, equations as I'm gonna show you. So this is the objective here of this video is just to show you these different scenarios and to drive to you, to show you how we can drive the electrical circuit by applying Kirchhoff voltage law to these different types or forms of the electrical, electrical circuit. Make sense? So this is the end of this video. In another video, I'm gonna show you how we can solve first order ODE, how we can solve second order ODE and how we can do analysis to this electrical circuit. Analysis, it means that to go beyond through the physics of this first order ODE, the physics of the behavior of this second order ODE. Like this first order ODE, when we try to blood the current, because here we are getting the current as a function of time. If we try to blood the current as a function of time, we're gonna end up with a curve. We can explain these curves. Whatever we gonna get it from a second order ODE through RL circuit or RC circuit or RLC circuit, right? So we can investigate the things. So I'm gonna show you in other videos, I'm gonna show you how we can solve first order ODE and second order ODE. So we're gonna work like purely mathematics. Then we're gonna go through the curves that we're gonna obtain by blooding these functions. Then we're gonna uh, uh, also, in the meanwhile, I'm going to show you how we can blood these currents over MATLAB and how we can use MATLAB for solving these ordinary differential equations. Make sense? So that's it for this video and see you in the next video.